QA Ninja. What's going on everyone? It's your boy the QA Ninja here back with another episode. Today we're talking PlayStation. On the Sega Genesis Mini, it's easy. I'll show you how. Stick around. The Sony PlayStation has arguably one of the most memorable, best video game libraries to recent memory. I have a lot of great times playing this system for everything from Tomb Raider to Crash Bandicoot. So in this video, I'm just going to simply show you how to get it up and running for your Sega Genesis Mini. I'm going to show you the different folder types and ROM types that you might come across and how to go about that and what you'll be needing in terms of hardware. Now if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscription button and click that notification bell so you can get more awesome videos like this. Let's have some fun together. Okay, so a couple of things that you're going to be needing. One is a um, right angled OTG USB adapter. I like to use this one specifically because it is slimline and it fits behind the Sega Genesis a lot smaller. And you're going to be needing, of course, a USB drive. I would say at least 16 gigabytes or more because these games tend to take up a lot of space. Now, you could put the USB drive directly into the second USB port of the Sega Genesis Mini. But there is a bug on there that tends to uh, rearrange the buttons when you boot up the system. So I would recommend just using the OTG adapter instead in the back. Link will be below for uh, this. Okay, and as you see in the picture, this is where it would be located. Now the first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is first install Hachi 3.7 as of making this video. There is a link below for a video that I've done on how to go about installing that and setting it up and everything. So I'm going to jump directly right into getting PlayStation set up for your system here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Hachi, open it up. As you see here are some games that I added to the Sega Genesis Mini already, including 32X. So I'm going to grab Crash Bandicoot Q file, drag it on over here. Okay, there it is, Crash Bandicoot. So I'm going to go ahead and update the artwork, which I did. Just click Google for all that. And you can go ahead and update the spine art as well. Click here. And then Crash Bandicoot here. Just click OK. All right. So the next thing we're going to need to do is go on to Modules. We're going to go to KMFD Mod Hub. And then we're going to go to KMFD RetroArc. If you haven't installed this already, I'm going to do this one Ozone and then download Module. Once that's all set, we're going to go to KMFD Cores. We're going to look for the PlayStation one. For this, we're going to do, I would say, PSX ARM, PCSX ARM Re ARM Neon. I find that this core has a lot of compatibility for a lot of PlayStation 1 games. So we're going to download this one. Close out of that. So the next thing we're going to do is install the extra modules, click here, and I'm going to just highlight Genesis Plus GX, the PCSX, Rearm Neon, Pico Drive, and of course RetroArch again, and then we're going to click OK. Now I've already installed this, it's going to prompt you to reconnect your system, but since I've already done it, I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but if you did, it'll just light up the green bar and then it'll be all set for you. So we're going to just click out of that. Okay, the most common PS1 file types you'll find is bin Q, but you also might come across a Q file with multiple bins. You just drag the Q file over. If you see an ECM game file, download uncm and then drag that file over onto uncm and it'll actually convert it over to bin so you can you actually can read it. So let's go over structuring the folders, click structure. 
And here you see all the folders split by console, so you can see everything organized by the console itself. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and um, click on Genesis because I like my games on the home screen. So control A, drag this over, click OK there, and then I'm going to go ahead and export to USB. And then as you see, there's my drive, click OK. Now I'm actually going to update the folder images. So I'm going to click on, um, let's see here, Sega 32X, so you just click on the image here. And then there's a bunch of different options here for you. So I'm going to look for look at 32X right here. I'm going to do the same thing for PlayStation. Just to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. And I'm going to look for PlayStation. Click OK. The moment I hit OK over here, I'm just going to delete this. Folder's not needed. As soon as I hit OK from here, it's going to automatically start to copy over. This will take some time. So give it a few minutes. It's a lot of files. Booting up my Sega Genesis Mini here with Hackchi. Alright, so you can see the folders I've just added. All the games I added. I hit all the uh, stock games for now. Okay, a little bit of everything. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and check out Sega 32X. I only added three games for now, but they're there. So I'll click back over here. Let's go down to PlayStation now. Alright, so three games I added, Crash, Spyro, and Tekken 3. Check out some Crash Bandicoot for now, see how this bad boy runs. Alright, cool. So it looks like it's booting up through RetroArch. Alright, yeah, Crash Bandicoot was the first ever PlayStation game I ever had. A lot of memories with this one, lots of fun. Definitely always considered him the official Sony PlayStation mascot. Seems like it's running smooth, so it's good to go. This is, yep, good to go. So let's try some Spyro. Spyro seems like it's playing pretty well. No screen tears, clean graphics, running off of the RetroArch Core. PCSX Rearm Neon. Very nice. Okay, and then lastly, some Tekken 3. Round one. Fight. And then this seems like it's running pretty good also. All right, very nice. If you guys have any questions feel free to leave a comment below thanks for watching feel free to subscribe also for more content and have a great one